Hi everyone, welcome back. So last time we were talking about datum features, we were talking about datums, and I said, well, we measure everything from the datums. You're like, okay, cool, but what does that actually mean? Well, when we create these planes with our datums, we're creating what's called a datum reference frame, a datum reference frame. Now, what is that? Well, before I get into exactly what it is, let's talk about something you might be familiar with. If you've taken like a trigonometry class or just any class where you had like y equals you know mx plus b kind of functions you probably plotted them at some point and the teacher told you okay well that's the y-axis right there that's the x-axis and this little point right here that was the origin so what you are effectively doing when you create a datum plane is you are saying okay well that's where the y-axis is that's where the x-axis is and using all of them together, you'll say, well, that's where the origin is. That's the zero. That's where everything is measured from. So we have this perfect frame of reference. These are always perfect. These things are simulated. They're not real. Um, they're theoretical things, and they're perfect. And we locate them by using our imperfect datum features. Now, some of those datums are more important than others, or they control more than others. And what they control is based on their order in the feature control frame. As we're going to learn later, BAC would be completely different than CAB, which would be different than ABC. I'm talking about my datums and the order I'm putting them in. All of those would give slightly different control, and there's reasons you would want to do it. I, all of them. So here's the best way to figure out what order to do. It's all based on degrees of freedom, which is a terrifying subject for any student. So if it doesn't quite make sense at first, that's okay. There are always six degrees of freedom for an object. It has the ability to move in three directions, X, Y, and Z. So like you moving through space is just any combination of those three. It also has the ability to rotate about those axes. Um, if you're thinking about a plane, Planes, I'm, I'm an aerospace engineer, so planes are always where I go. Okay, so if you have a plane, here's my plane. It can rotate this way. That's how it goes, you know, begins going up in the sky. Hopefully not that steep of an angle, those poor people. It can also, if I'm looking at it from, you know, the side, or from the front, here's my wings, here's my tail right here. It can rotate that way or you know back and forth. So that's the second way they can rotate. And that's good, that's when it's usually trying to turn. And there's the most terrifying kind of turning, which is if I'm looking at it from above, here's my tail, here's the body of my aircraft, and here's my wings. It can also rotate like this. Three different ways of rotating that all of them added together allows you to do any sort of motion. This is called yaw, technically. It does happen. It's very strange and it's horrifying if you're on a plane that's having to do that. But it does happen. Okay, so we want our datums to constrain different degrees of freedom. That's why we're choosing them. That first datum says I can't move through the ground anymore. And therefore, if I can't move through the ground, I can't rotate because that would make me go through the ground in either of these directions. So that got rid of three degrees of freedom. My second plane would probably be this back wall. So I can't move in one direction anymore. Okay, that's gotten rid of it, one degree of freedom. And also I can no longer rotate around that because that would push me through the wall. So that got rid of two degrees of freedom. And my third datum says I, you can't move this direction either. So there's only one degree of freedom left, so it gets rid of that one too. So grand total, your first reference gets rid of three degrees of freedom, then two, and then one. This three, two, one is gonna come back, so don't forget it, three, two, one. First datum gets rid of three degrees of freedom, second gets rid of two, third gets rid of one. And there are some caveats to that, but for right now, just take it at face value. And don't forget, three, two, one, count it down. Okay, so that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.